Hey everybody, good evening. It's Ellen Lewis from Crazy For You Yarns and I am so glad that you are here. So I have joining me my friend Roseanne Fleischauer who Hello. is a designer from Boston. She's working on a book, <laughs> which I just found out, which I think is so very cool. So look for that, right? When's that yeah. coming out? It'll be out next uh, spring. Oh my goodness. Yeah, very cool. It's huh? coming along. Yeah? Yeah. It's hard work, isn't it? It is. It's a lot more work than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a good team, so that helps. A good team is the best. Mm -hmm. So tonight, um, I promised you a conversation about uh, Juniper Moon yarns, and in particular, three of their worsted weight yarns. So it's interesting, you know, you walk into the yarn store and you say, I would like a worsted weight yarn. What exactly does that mean, you know? <laughs> Depends on what you're trying to make. <laughs> right. I mean, so there's so, so many options for worsted weight yarns, you know? Um, and so the three that I want to discuss today are Santa Cruz, uh, Moonshine, and um, Celestina. There's some discussion about the pronunciation on that. Um, I think Celestina sounds so elegant, but that's probably wrong. So <laughs> we'll go with Celestina. It's easier to spell that way, too. Yes, much More easier phonetic. to spell. Yes, absolutely. So um, tell me, it's going to be hard for us, for me to see all the comments, but tell me if you have worked with any Juniper Moon yarn so far and what your favorites are. So I'm always interested in hearing kind of your experience with Juniper Moon. I love Juniper Moon. I remember when when they first kind of came on the on the scene. I had Susie Gibbs. Mm -hmm. Who remember? Did you meet Susie? I have met her. She's lovely. She's so sweet. Yep, and she has the prettiest photography in her patterns. Yes, they're, I really appreciate those because they're just beautiful to look at. Yeah, yeah, she does a nice job, and mm -hmm. I think her model selection is very inclusive and diverse, and I like that too. You can see yourself in the images that she projects on her patterns and that's a nice as attribute of her patterns yes absolutely they're not um they're not so aspirational <laughs> they're realistic in a way yeah 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 you can see yourself actually being that person right and having that wonderful day on the farm or wherever the pictures were taken right so um juniper moon farm is a tiny farm in rural virginia which i wrote about in the newsletter so if you read that you know that um and it was kind of just a CSA sort of thing. You know, she produced a very limited amount of yarn from her own sheep. And she had the most amazing dogs. Mm -hmm. What were those dogs? The big, big white she, guard the, dogs? Uh, Great Pyrenees. Yes, Great Pyrenees. Those beautiful dogs. You know, working dogs. Um, and then she, like, leveraged that to mm -hmm. a national brand. Yeah. International, even. International, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. And I think I love her story. Um and you know her yarn is distributed through Knitting Fever. So I love them and they are wonderful. Um, so the first one is Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is a basic, okay? Um, it is when somebody comes in and they say, I want yarn, I want some wool yarn. This is what they're thinking, don't you think? I think so. It's also really easy to work with and it has a nice weight to it. You can pair it with something to make it a bulkier weight. You can keep it as a, a true worsted weight. And then you can, as you're using it, you can learn about the way it can be worked to, into other things. So if you start with a good basic like it, you can then decide, well, maybe it wants to be paired with something a little more elegant, just to make it a little bit different and give it a little bit more depth. Yeah. It comes in a beautiful array of colors. It does. The, the colors are really heathery. Let me show. I have a, yeah. a basket of them oh, yeah. here. So let me see this basket of, of colors. And, you know, they're all, I love a, a good heather yarn. So these all, you know what heather is, when the, when the colors are kind of, the, the colors are combed and carded together before they're spun. So you get this real subtle kind of depth of color. Look at this blue. I think this is just beautiful. You see this blue color? Anyway. It's almost like denim. It is. It's it reminds like me of a chambray shirt. Remember the real traditional French yes. chambray shirt? Yes. This is what it reminded me of. Yeah. And I just, the other thing that's really nice about it is that it's a four ply. Right. So you get a really nice presentation as you start to knit with it. And it has a good twist. It's rounded. 
and it makes a really well-defined stitch. Yes, it has great stitch definition. This is the yarn that you're thinking of when you think, I would like to knit a cabled sweater. Absolutely. Right, so the stitches don't bias at all. They are they are perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. And that's what you get from a nice four-ply yarn like this. Um, I love that it's organic too. Yep, I think that one of the niceties of the yarn itself is that when you're working with it, you can feel good about using it. Right. You can feel good about the way that they processed it. You can feel good about the fact that it's an organic product and it's organic from start to finish, so to speak. Right. And that the um, the way that they've sourced it has provided them with the opportunity to, to allow people to learn more about it someplace they may have never been or may never get a chance to visit. You go to Santa Cruz. Who gets a chance to actually visit Santa Cruz? Yeah. My daughter was going to go hiking in Patagonia, camping in Patagonia, which is in Argentina. So mm -hmm. I don't know how your geography is. Mine is pretty poor. I had to look it up. <laughs> we did look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Patagonia is in Argentina, and it's very high in the mountains. So um, you get this beautiful, heavy wool that's grown because of this slightly harsh climate. And I love that, um, you know, we just got the, the new Vogue knitting, and I love what Clara Parks says. She said, um, as we are now learning, sheep play a central role in regenerative agriculture. They can restore non-arable soil to health while capturing a ton of carbon as they do it. So I love how wool is just generally such a sustainable and good for you mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. And I love that this wool comes from a place where wool production is their major economic driver. Exactly. Right. So it's it's pr it's production supports their agricultural society. It supports their agricultural society that they have been able to maintain for a number of years. Too. Right. For decades. For decades. And it's really helpful because you know that as a consumer, you can feel good about contributing to their economic health without them having to enter into a new area. Right. You know, they're able to rely upon their agrarian roots. And about the, the wool itself, it has a nice long staple, too. So as you're working with it, you can actually, as you see the stitches becoming more defined as you're doing your work, you don't have that um, problem that you sometimes have with a single ply or something that has a shorter staple. Yes, it has a nice long <laughs> staple, so it's a smoother. Yes. And it, it's a worsted spun. So this has a certain smoothness to it. Um, the yarn itself is 197 yards. It's put up in 100 gram hanks. Um, it's a heavy worsted. So my first swatch on it was this. I did it on a US eight, and this is exactly 16 stitches over four inches. And this swatch, wait for it, machine wash. <laughs> Practically indestructible, right? So a beautiful, um, a beautiful basic. It's a little heavier than some of the worsteds that we've had in the shop that really are better at 2021. This one is solidly happy anywhere between 16 and 19. And you pushed the gauge too, didn't oh, you? Oh yeah, we had some fun pushing the gauge. So we were able to push the gauge up to, what are you on here? Here we're on a 10 and a half, but we started on a 10 and you can see that it becomes more um, open on the 10 and a half. So you get a really interesting drape. And we actually paired it with uh, some silky kids. Yep. Which may so not show a, it for a real weight, well. A lace weight mohair, like yep. Ella Ray silky kid carried with this. Um, and it provides a nice bit of loft to it. Mm -hmm. So if a beginner wants to work with this particular wool, they would get very good results because they would have the ability to get great stitch definition and get a true worsted weight. And then if somebody wanted to get a little fancier and do something with a little bit more uh, loft to it and to have a little bit more depth of color, maybe even adding a second color mm -hmm. as, as opposed to the perfectly matched colorway that, that we happen to find. This is an elegant fabric. Don't you it think? makes a very elegant fabric and you could easily use it to make a poncho. Mm -hmm. You could use it to make a shawl. And then you can, if you use the size 10 needle, you get really nice stitch definition and you get the added advantage of being able to work it up faster. Right. Because the yarn itself is so flexible. And in general, 
when you're working on a size eight, you can get six, your 16 stitches to the inch. You can step it up to a nine. And at this point, we were up at a 10 and a half and got good stitch depth finition, even with a 10 and a half by blending it with the silky, silky kid. kid. Yep. So that it had a little bit of halo. And it makes it softer. It does. And I'll tell you what. You know, I always say that softness and durability are on opposite ends of the same spectrum. So a yarn that you pick up and you're like, oh, this is so soft. It's so luxurious. May or may not be the most durable yarn. No, it may not be <laughs> the best thing for gifting. Right. And it, it's probably not a thing you want for a guy um, because he puts that alpaca silk in the washer. Yep. And you say goodbye to it. <laughs> right. Or you wear it once and it's all pilly under the arm. Mm -hmm. So this is a yarn that is really a workhorse yarn. I called my friend Jay over at um, Knitting Fever today and he's, we was talking about the yarn with me and I was asking him, I said, tell me a story about this. And he said that he had a customer who um, had knit a lopey style um, sweater, you know, one of those Icelandic sweaters for her husband in this yarn. And as things do, it got into the laundry mm -hmm. and into the washing machine. And she just was ill when she realized that this had happened. But she pulled it out and there was absolutely no shrinking. I found that when I washed this swatch, that it, um, it bloomed a lot. So it didn't change size, but the yarn itself really kind of opened up and got, um, it filled in those spaces. Do you know what I mean? So it kind of... It bloomed. That's what it does. You found you had a comment too about how superwash wool often behaves. Yes, sometimes superwash wool, as you wear the garment, it will start to stretch in the direction in which it was knit or crocheted. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger problem with knitting than it is with crochet, only because of the the way that you work the yarn. But as you're working the yarn, you may notice that your swatch looks great. But then when you start to work on a project and someone goes to wear that project, all of a sudden your gauge doesn't look right because it's too big. the weight of the yarn. But this one, because it has that little bit of a halo in it, which uh, adds a little bit of dimension to it and it blooms the yarn to make give it a little bit softer finish it also prevents it from doing that stretchy thing that yeah. some of the super wash yarns will do right and it, did, it wasn't floppy i mean this hasn't no. been in the dryer but it a lot of times the super wash will when it comes out of the washer will be floppy right and the other nice thing about this was when it came to time to just block it out it blocked out well because if you try and block super wash wool it will yeah <laughs> It can be not the greatest. <laughs> it can be not the greatest. Uh, even if you have put it in the in the dryer and tried to treat it exactly like they say on the label. But this one, that must just be the way that it's spun. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of is the long staple in it and the fact that it's four ply is what's contributing to its durability as well as its washability, which is really impressive. Don't you think? I think that's the most impressive attribute of it because then you can <laughs> safely knit for someone that may or not have the time to take care of it the way you would take care of a very fine wool. Right. Now, this is a merino. And as you know, that merino is graded by the, the measurement, the, the width of its um, staple. So your cashmere is in the 14, 15 micron and your extra fine merino, or your super fine merino is in the, you know, 17, 18, 19. This is probably 20. So it's not as soft as some of your other yarns, as I said, but it is durable. And I think this would be great for like outerwear. Yep. I think this would make a great structured jacket. In fact, next week I will share with you, we have the trunk show. So I will share you with you the garments from the trunk show, but I'll also share with you some thoughts I have about um, projects that would be absolutely beautiful for this. So this is called Santa Cruz. It's 100% organic merino from Patagonia and it is by Juniper Moon Farms. So this is your basic. This is sort of a baseline yep. staple yarn, don't mm -hmm. you think? I think this is a great staple, and it also reminds me a bit of uh, when you would get the Irish wool. Yes. To do a good wool sweater. Yes, this would make a beautiful Irish sweater. That would be gorgeous to do cables with. Wouldn't it? It would and, really show. Great and it stitch. would pop. Yeah. Yeah, you could do yeah. a honeycomb stitch too. You could crochet with it as well. Mm, we didn't try that. You'll have to try that. Yeah, that we can try okay. next. Hi, ladies. It's nice to see you guys. <laughs> Ellen, Kathy, and Evelyn, and Gwen, Amelia, Terry, Jal. Oh, my goodness. Sandy. Wow. Great to see you. 
Okay, so next one that I wanted to share with you, everybody's favorite yarn, moonshine. moonshine. <laughs> Why do we love it so much? Because it's just so lovable. It's, it's just is. huggable. You have to love moonshine yarn. It's squishy. It's squishy and it's comfortable. And the colorways that it comes in are just so impressive. So I have this whole pile of moonshine here. You can see all the things. Oh, so I knit a mitten. I actually knit two mittens, but I just have one here. <laughs> Ginny knit this great hat. I mean, so many of our sweaters have been in, in moonshine because this is the yarn that you pick up on the shelf and say, Ooh, I love it. Right. <laughs> got to have this. This is, um, so what makes it so fabulous? It's a single ply. It's a single ply. It's soft. Yep. The colorways that it comes in are very impressive and it can stand the test of time. You can work with it. And as you're working with it, you can actually enjoy the process and enjoy the final product. I it's just great to touch it. <laughs> I know. It's great for gifting, too, because uh, although it is not as durable as the uh, Santa Cruz that we talked about before, it the, it does clean up nicely, so to speak. <laughs> if you accidentally put it in the washing machine, you can still block it out. Yes. I yes. It's not going to felt. It's not going to felt immediately. I had accidentally put uh, an, an easy fold poncho that I had knit out of it in the washing machine. And I didn't realize it was in there, but it came out okay. It was a cold wash, mm -hmm. and I just reblocked the whole thing. Yeah. Not the way I would suggest treating it, <laughs> but I was really impressed that it worked out. And actually, the yarn was so beautiful. A girlfriend of mine had taken it, and she had rolled it around on some of the uh, regular straight needles mm -hmm. and put it in a vase as a birthday present. Aww. It was That's three, so sweet. It was gorgeous. It was the prettiest idea. What a great idea. Yeah. I just, just very creative. So this yarn, solidly worsted weight, it's not going to be as happy at 16 stitches over 4 inches as the Santa Cruz, but it does have a variety of gauge options. I have several swatches here. Um, we have knit this at four and a half, and you can see this is a, you know, a really kind of a drapey, soft fabric with a beautiful little halo to it. We have knit it at 20 so a little more structure on it, um, beautiful. So this is 40% alpaca, 40% wool, mm -hmm. and 20% silk, which is, you know. <laughs> it's the trifecta. <laughs> it is. <laughs> sort of like vanilla ice cream, caramel sauce, and toast to pecans. Exactly. Perfect together. Perfect together. You don't know why, but it just works. It just and works. And it's something about the proportion of it, too, where it, where it's the, the proportion of the silk in it gives it a little bit of sheen. Yes. It doesn't make it too slick and difficult to work with. Right. Um, one nice thing about working with the moonshine is that when you're working with it as a new knitter, you can enjoy the beautiful fiber, and you don't have to worry about the silk being too slippery. Right. Because it has the other... Uh, attributes of it to kind of hold it together. Do you want me to hold one of those up? Will you? Um, yeah, maybe you could hold this this pale gray. So I wanted to sh to talk a little bit about the fact that you might have to get a little closer to the okay to the camera. Um, it's very hard to get out of the sofa. <laughs> that camera up there. It's very comfortable though. Yeah. So it also has, you know, the way that the, the silk is carted into it, mm -hmm. you can see that it has a little bit of a textural aspect to it. Almost a little bit. It's not tweed. No, it's not but, Tweety. But, you know, the three different fibers in there take the dye slightly differently. Which is why it almost looks heathered, but yes. it's not uh, as pronounced as, as you see when you're looking at the Santa Cruz. Like, if you look at two similar colors between the two, the coloration of the moonshine is much gentler, I think. Yeah, it's because the you, the different fibers take the dye differently right. rather than having two different colors mm -hmm. blended in the same yarn. Right, so, so you have a gradual uh, tonal quality to it rather than having the yarn itself be defined by the actual fiber that it right. is. Right, but I think it has great stitch definition. It does, and it lasts too. So have you knit a sweater out of it? I have done ponchos out of it. Yeah. I have not done a, an actual sweater out mm -hmm. of it. And the reason I do ponchos out of it is because it's just so nice next to the skin. Yes. And sweaters in New England, we tend to wear over something else. But a poncho is more of something that you would wear over a tank top in the spring. Right. And it's just that way you can enjoy the fiber. Yes. And feel it next to your skin and just enjoy the way it catches the light. 
the dark colors are really interesting. Look at this you red. See that? Yeah. <laughs> see how it heathers? Yeah. Can you see that? A little bit of. It's just really a lovely coloration. It's not a total. It's a total relationship, but it's not drastic. <laughs> Bubble gum. My favorite. <laughs> that one is fun. This is very fun. Yeah. So lots of great colors. And the thing I like about it, I mean, this has been part of their line since probably 2010. Probably about that. It's been a while. Yeah. And some of the darker colors, do you have a couple darker colors in there? I do. There's this dark purple. Um, because, there's this dark green, yeah. which is beautiful. And these can be used for making men's garments too. Here's that, that charcoal gray. Right. So if you have a very fickle person for whom you're trying to make as a gift... <laughs> Which I do at home. Really? Is <laughs> yes. he knitworthy? He's knitworthy. Okay. 29 years of marriage, he's knitworthy. Um, but it's nice to use this type of yarn, even if you're using it to line something. You can make a double-sided uh, hat and line it with this. Oh, what a good idea. It makes it warmer and it makes it more comfortable for someone who may have very short hair or a bald head. <laughs> <laughs> Not anybody we know. <laughs> Certainly not. But uh, the thing I like about the moonshine is because it comes in such a wide range of colors, you can make things for men out of it. Yeah. You can make a nice vest out of it too, by the way. Although I haven't made a sweater yet. But mm. I have done vests and ponchos. It is really yummy. If you haven't squooshed it. Oh, you have to stop shop. by and squoosh yeah, it. Stop by, stop by and squoosh the moonshine. Yeah, it really is. It's one of those yarns that we carry in every color. <laughs> And it makes sense to carry yeah. it in every color because you can also partner it with other yarns too. Yes. It's it's the kind of yarn that you can use for color work. Um, it's not a super wash. Um, and it's going to kind of grip the other one a little bit, I think, for color work. I like to say it blends together nicely. Okay. That, because it has it. a little bit of a halo on it. Mm -hmm. And the if you take two of them and put them next to each other and you start to look for the way the colors may work with each other, you can see how as... The two are work together. The color work will start to sort of blend the haze. Oh, of that's both. a good point. It yes. softens it. It yeah. softens it, not unlike the way we get the softening when we add mohair to the Santa Cruz. So pretty. So, See, this is why stuff. she's a designer. <laughs> <laughs> I just talk the yarn. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Makes a good team. Yeah. All right. Here before it sends up in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty if you need it. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. So the last yarn mm. I want to share with you is so yummy. It was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about your experience with it. So I had not seen it before. And do you want to give those? So I have a little swatches. So actually Roseanne, like I said, is a designer. And she is the designer who is designing the pattern that is included with our amazing advent kit. So, um, I'm excited about that. And we've been working on quite a number of, of projects together. And it's been really fun. It has been fun. Yeah. Because I've also been able to try new yarns. Right. And we've been able to spend some time together and just sort of share ideas. Yeah. Which, no, that's that's been great. Yeah. You know, it's always nice to have a, a creative person in your life. <laughs> um, so I fell in love with this yarn last season. Um, this is black. Knitting in black is kind of a, a punishment you do to yourself. Occasionally. Occasionally, but this is um, a cashmere blend. So Celestina or Celestina is this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn um, from Juniper Moon. Here's what I like about it. Okay, cashmere. 60% <laughs> cashmere, 40% wool, and it is what they call a modern construction. So it's a chainette, right? We've talked about chainettes before, but look how stretchy. I'm going to see if I can. So can you see this? Yeah. Look how stretchy. It is like literally a rubber band. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It has a lot of give in it and it's very forgiving too. Right. The nice thing about the uh, chain at construction too is that as you're working it, you get great stitch definition and it's not particularly heavy. Yes. It's so very light. It's very lightweight and you sort of have um, the added bonus of because it is lightweight and the construction of it is so fine, you capture air within it so that keeps you warmer, oh. not unlike a cashmere fiber would. Okay. That's that's a really good point. Um, I find it incredible to wear. I knit this black sweater. Oh, yeah, Any of you who know me know that I wear that all the time in the winter. I'm probably tired of seeing it, but 
<laughs> too bad because I love it. Um, anyway, it is it is so so yummy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's billed as a worsted weight, but you are going to knit this. And here's the thing: you're going to knit this on a ten to get twenty stitches over four inches because it's so, so bouncy. You could definitely knit it on a smaller needle and get a tighter gauge, but I think it would be a waste. I think it is because as you knit it and you're using it in a tight gauge, you're not taking full advantage of the construction of the yarn itself, and you're not getting the full advantage of the way that the yarn drapes. This particular yarn has a beautiful drape to it as a result of it being the chain knit, and the fibers, again, being a, a longer staple, are contributing to the, the ability of the yarn itself to be a little bit more stretchy. And it's going to hold its shape. Again, mm -hmm. that chainette construction, because it is so bouncy, you're not going to have something that's saggy or baggy or... None of us need saggy and baggy in our life. We don't need droopy either. <laughs> no, or droopy. We want perky. Exactly. It's perky yarn. <laughs> it's a very perky fiber. <laughs> We all need perky in and our it life. it hangs nicely. Yes. And, and because I had um, had the opportunity to swatch with it, I can also tell you that if you're trying to get your gauge and get to a point that you're happy with it, you can keep reworking it. Yes. It's so durable. It's, it's not going to be pilly. No, it's not pilly. And it doesn't stick to itself the way that some yarns do. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to swatch with them, you can't re-swatch. So you don't have to be afraid of swatching more than once with that. Or theoretically three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to touch it. It's just really well done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those yarns that comes along and you say, like moonshine, I just want to touch it. Right. I'm not sure what I want to do with it, but it has to come home with me and it's going to be part of my collection. <laughs> I will tell you that moonshine is a lot more affordable. Celestina or Celestina is definitely a luxury, luxury fiber. Okay. At 60% cashmere, it is not cheap, but if you decide to knit with it, I promise you this will be something that you will have in your wardrobe for a long, long time, and you will just love it. So I, like I said, I did that that V-neck sweater, and we're actually doing um, a knit along for that sweater inside our membership site. Um, I designed that because I thought, okay, how can I get the maximum amount of use out mm -hmm. of this? A V-neck, very open. Yep. There's one ball that you're not using. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Three quarter sleeves. There's another, another ball one. that you're yeah. not using. And you want you want a pullover because you want it right next to your skin. Would you yeah. wear this next to your skin? I would definitely wear that next to my skin. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a couple of shawl ideas for it because one, it doesn't droop. So as you're wearing it, you don't feel like you have this heavy thing around your neck. And two, the yarn itself is just so soft. Yes. It has to be next to your skin. Yes. And you could wear that without something underneath it if you wanted to. You don't have to worry about it growing either. Right. I definitely so. am wearing that without something underneath. Well, I mean, you know, not a blouse. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to put it, partner it with a, a turtleneck. Right. No, you don't have to partner it with a turtleneck. So, yeah, there's a lot of gauge options with this yarn, and it is beautiful, and the colors are beautiful. Um there is this black. There's a gorgeous burgundy. There's an incredible green. Um, oh, look at this one. This yeah, is a that. chestnut that's really pretty. Um, two shades of uh, gray. Here's another one of the shades of gray, the darker shade of gray. This is actually a swatch that lovely Morgan did for her sweater that she's doing. Isn't that pretty? So, so wonderful. Such a lovely fiber. Um, so yeah, if you decided that you wanted to spring for something that was really super luxe, I would recommend this yarn. This one is great for that. And the other nice thing about it is because it has that little bit of stretch, if you're working on something and you're trying to get the sizing just right, you do have a little bit more flexibility. Yes, you do. So, so I asked um, Roseanne to design for us a, an accessory in the Celestina in case you wanted to treat yourself to something fabulous and luxurious, but maybe didn't want to spring for an entire sweater's worth of cashmere. Or, you know, what a great gift for somebody. You know, something so beautiful and luxurious, you would have such a treat knitting it for yourself, and then you could give it and you know that it would be something someone would really love. And they'd be able to enjoy for a long time. Exactly. Because the construction of that yarn is, is very durable. Yes. 
beautiful so stuff. You have to treat it well, but you can keep it for a long time. Right. So isn't it interesting how very, very different um, worsted weight yarns can be? I mean, and this is just just three. I mean, there are probably five more examples of worsted weight fibers that you could consider. I mean, just from Juniper Moon alone, mm -hmm. I think. You could easily do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of them are that you have your single ply, you have the four ply, you have the chainette. So you have a variety of different yarns that you could use. You could even partner them together because one of the nice things about the Juniper Moon line is you can take different yarns and put them with each other in a complementary way. If you wanted to stripe a garment, you could stripe the garment and then also have the added advantage of slightly different textural experiences. Because I think the colors sort of work. Where is that one? Anyway, I think the do I think that's true. I think yeah. the colors work. Their palette is nice and pretty wearable. You could put this one with the oatmeal. Oh yeah. You could do it with the gray. That's pretty. So as you start to experience the different pieces of the Juniper Moon line, you could say, Well, I love this gray and what can I partner it with to stripe it with a little bit different texture? And you could stripe it with mm -hmm. the Celestina. That would be pretty. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Jenna had a question. Cumulus is also considered a worsted weight. Yes. Yeah, cumulus is a cotton, and it is also a modern construction. It's a chainette construction. It's a different kind of chainette construction. If you look at the video that I did on the different kinds of chainettes, you know, the number of stitches in the chain, the length of the chain, all of that um, features into how the yarn is constructed and how the final hand is. Mm -hmm. The cumulus is beautiful. It's really lofty and you can push the gauge, but I think you get a better result when you knit it closer to gauge. So something in the, probably not too much larger than 16 stitches over four inches, Jenna. So, but, but beautiful. It is beautiful. And the nice thing about the cumulus is you can make something any time of the year. Right. You know, you can knit with it when it's 110 degrees. <laughs> right. Well, you're in Boston, so you you have a very, very cold winter. For us, I mean, cumulus could definitely be an all-season yarn. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the other nice thing about it is when you're working with it, you can work it at that 16 inches, which is critical for getting your worsted weight. Right. And you can use it in lieu of um, a wool yarn in a lot of patterns. And the colors are just adorable. They are. It, it Because of its construction, Cumulus is, again, a cotton that knits like a wool. It does. It has that elasticity. It has that softness. It has mm -hmm. the bloom. A lot of cottons, you know, are very, um, they're very crisp. And Cumulus is the opposite of crisp. It's, it's squishy. It's squishy, yes. It's squishy. It's like, it's like cotton moonshine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well done. And it's cotton washable, moonshine. Too. Yes, yeah. washable. It washes nicely. I do think you have to be a little gentle with it, though. Don't yes, you? you have to be careful with it, right. but you can wash it. It doesn't pill, but mm -hmm. it does, it can, you know, the surface of it can brush up a bit, which I, which can really add to, I think, the appeal, depending on the, on, on the stitch that you're using. Mm -hmm. Just know that you might lose your stitch definition a, a smidge. I think that using cumulus or using any other uh, cotton yarn, it's always important to swatch it too. Yes. And not only to finish the swatch and look at it and appreciate it, but then wash it the way you would wash the finished garment. Yes. So that would be my only other caution when using it in lieu of using worsted wool. You're right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should wash my swatches. <laughs> Oh, that's something I wanted to tell you guys. Okay, this is really, really important. Um, Amy, who was one of my Tuesday night knitters and we, one of the three of us that did this this sweater last year, she did hers in this beautiful blue Celestina. And she thought that she had knit the sweater from a different yarn and she threw it in the washer and the dryer. Right? She, Panic would ensue. It's, it came out great. <laughs> it's washable. Who knew? Okay. I would advise you always to wash your swatch because and measure it before and after. Right. Your your mileage may vary, but Amy's was perfect. It came out, it bloomed, it was beautiful and even softer than when she knit it. Wow. Shocking, I know, that right? Is shocking. You should take some of that red and swatch it and knit it and uh wash it and see what you think. Well, I have steamed it. 
and it came uh, to a point where it bloomed up really nicely. But I actually now do wonder if I put it in a delicate bag, yes. put it in a cold wash right. with uh, on delicate cycle, what does it look like? It's only a swatch. It's not. Right. What if you, I mean, just put it in there with your towels, you know, see how that goes. Because uh, what if you get to lose, right? Exactly. It's just at, a swatch. At some point, it's just a four by four or six by six swatch. Right. And just remember when you, when I swatch, I also make sure that I always measure before and after. You are so good. <laughs> it's the math background. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Too fun. All right. Let's see what Meredith has to say. All right. What weight is cumulus considered? Okay. Yes. Cumulus is worsted. I think we talked about that. Um, I came in late. Which sweater is Ellen wearing? <laughs> Oh, so this is an ancient vest. Um, I'll share the pattern with you later on. It's a cotton um, from a company that um, I'm not sure they exist anymore, but you could use any kind of um, DK weight cotton for it. And it's definitely a Jenna kind of sweater. Let's see what else we got here. Um, Meredith. Hey, Meredith. Let's see. Um, a sweater I did in Cumulus, but it's a looser gauge. All right. A sweater I did in cumulus, but it's a looser gauge. Will tighter gauge not flatten or smoosh the stitch as much? Hmm. So a tighter gauge on cumulus is going to give you a plushier fabric. I think anytime you knit something more tightly, you get a more durable fabric. When you push the gauge, that's a term that we use to say that we're knitting something at a looser gauge, like, like on a did. larger needle, like we did with the Santa Cruz. When you push the gauge, you lose some of that bounce and that, um, that plushy quality of the fabric. You're sacrificing the plushy quality of the fabric for drape. So it really depends on what you're looking for. You know, if you're looking for a lot of structure and great stitch definition, you're going to want to knit that closer to the recommended gauge on the ball band. If you're looking for something that is drapier and softer and a little more relaxed fabric with not such a focus or emphasis on your stitch pattern, then it's okay to push that gauge. Just remember that anything knit at a tighter gauge is always going to be more durable than anything knit at a looser gauge. Absolutely. And it's always <laughs> a good idea to also consider what pattern you're using, what stitch pattern you're using. Right. Because sometimes if you try and push something too far, all of a sudden you lose the integrity of the actual stitch pattern. Absolutely. You won't even notice. You can't even see that if you do a cable or you do a seed stitch, it's just sort of floppy. You don't see the stitches at all. You don't see all the hard work. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Does that help? All right. Let's Oh, so Ellen is doing hers. Yay. Ellen's doing her custom fit in Celestina. Yep. Hey, Colleen, my love. How are you? Uh, Trisha, this I think is, um, yes, you did that. You did this Celestina in the, in this color. Oh my gosh. How are we on time? We are way over time, but oh, oh my I'm goodness, sorry. you guys, <laughs> it's been so much fun. I know. <laughs> So um, thank you so much for joining me. I love this little setup from being in a shop. Let me know what you think about it. I won't always have a friend here, but you could come every week. I can try and come a little more often. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do that. So, okay. Um, great to have you. And if you have any questions about um, any of the yarns that we talked about tonight or any of the Juniper Moon fibers, I would love to talk with you about them. If you are local and you want to come by the shop, I would love to share them with you. But be sure to tune in next week because we are going to be looking at the trunk show that we have and the beautiful garments knit in the three yarns that I talked about tonight, as well as some other yarns hint cumulus that are um, <laughs> some of the samples that are knit in some of the other yarns that we talked about. So until then, good night and happy knitting. All right.